almost was not going to stream today, but I figured the show must go on. As I think it was P.T. Barnum who said that. Okay, let me uh, paste this where it fucking matters. Oops. Alright, so this is time one, right? Yeah, that is. Okay. So what did we do last time? Uh it's the thing after the bad thing. Uh which I forget. Oh well. Yeah. It's a good theme, but yeah. How could they all be caught? The dimwits? Looks like it's time for a jailbreak, Carmen San Diego style. A few tweaks to the chrono skimmer, and I'll be there in no time. You fools need bailing out, I see. I'll just chrono skim you past those outdated bars. Stand back. I have more history hijinks planned for us. So, back to the past we go. Ah, oh, goddammit. Time detective. I've got a major bummer bulletin. Oh no. Carmen San Diego has just chrono skimmed into Acme Jail and mm. then back out again with her heinous cord in tow. No. She used our technology to pull a jailbreak. That's yeah, no. that is embarrassing. We've reinforced the prison with transtemporal laser bars, so another jailbreak can't happen. But of course now those crooks are back out there pilfering paraphernalia from the past. They must be recaptured. It's a good thing you're out there on the job. Right now, you're fast forwarding to 1460, where something strange has happened in the Inca Empire's accounting. Oh, this one. You'll have to straighten out this naughty problem. When oh, you're visiting the center one. of a great empire, antiquity is the good guy you want on your side. Good luck up in the Andes, detective, and don't get lightheaded in that mountain air. So this is the second half of the game. The quality sort of takes a downturn a bit. Not too much. You know, you'd much, think they'd serve more than just a snack on these long time flights. Antiquity here. If you're feeling woozy, it's the altitude. We're way up on top of the Andes, smack dab in the middle of the Inca Empire. The year is 1460, and that's Emperor Pachacuti Yupanqui over there the head honcho of the Inca Empire. May the mighty sun scorch the demon's eyeballs. Someone has stolen my quipus. All of our records lost. My empire will fall apart at the seams without them. Whoa, he is losing it. We'd better investigate the situation. I'd be pissed off too. Whoa, hey, that's a Carmen note. The thief was here. All right. Oh, look at the furry guinea pig. Cute little guy. What do you call it? Dinner. That's a cooey, of course. Oh, no. With a little corn and plenty of salt, they are most tasty. Oh, Ugh. sorry I asked. 
Don't apologize, man. See that pot? The Incas were a remarkably advanced culture, but they never got around to inventing the wheel, even pottery wheels. Pottery was made by coiling clay in strips instead of spinning it. Wow. Imagine not inventing the wheel. What the fuck? That tapestry is woven from the wool of the llama. Wonderfully warm, that llama wool. Perfect in these cold mountain regions. I love the thin air in the Andes. Whew. Believe it or not, we're standing more than two miles above sea level right now. Okay. When I journey through my empire, I sit in this decorated traveling chair, which is carried by my servants. It's rather heavy, but a ruler must travel in style, you know. Hmm, the guys who carry it probably don't enjoy the trip as much okay, as he does. Uh, I need to see if uh, I'm... If everything's running smoothly. It seems to be... Yeah. Okay. Stuff's... Ooh, Inca stones. stonework was a marvel to behold. The carved stones fit together so closely that mortar wasn't even needed to hold things together. Amazing, huh? Education. My administration is in a shambles. The outer regions are already grumbling. Who the hell are you? I am the great Pachacuti, ninth ruler of the Inca Empire and descendant of the gods. Well, we could debate that point all day, but I'll tell you this. I'm the greatest Inca leader ever. My armies have conquered lands to the north and the south. My empire now includes over 12 million people. Well, first I rebuilt Cusco here, the capital of the hey. empire. Then I really got busy, channeling rivers, building agricultural terraces, inventing state religions, those sort of things. I pride myself on an efficient empire. Sure you do. My keepers have been stolen. Without them, I can't keep track of things in my empire. A kipu is a long strand of knotted string used to record numbers. It is very exact. I use kipus to track all important numbers related to my empire, like population counts and inventories of food. You see, all surplus food made by the people is collected here in Cusco. Then, if a particular region is struck by famine, I can send them some food from my royal stockpile. But without the kipus to keep track of the supplies, I can't distribute things. Well, since the theft of the kipus, my kipu kamayaks have been working overtime to recount everything. These royal accountants could really use some help. I bet. Go to the storerooms and speak to my head kipu kamayak. He will tell you what to do. All right. Those Rich. rope bridges are sturdier than they look. The Incas used them to cross deep chasms, and some stretched out for 200 feet or more. Wow. I see you are admiring my magnificent terraces. They're part of a complex irrigation system I've just introduced. It's all part of my plan to make the land more but fertile no here in the Cusco Valley. This road is part of a sophisticated highway system built by the Incas. The Romans may have had a knack for flat roads, but the Incas built theirs up and over steep mountains. With those new roads, it now only takes two days for my subjects to fetch me fresh fish from the sea, instead of weeks. Goodbye, and remember, millions of my hungry citizens are counting on you. I guess it's not easy ruling over 12 million hungry people. Talk about job stress. These nuts are wearing me out. We'll never recount the supplies in time. It sounds familiar. Yes, I'm the head Kipu Kamayok. I'm in charge of all the Kipus and all the counting. You sound like another counter that I know. I count everything. 
Not only the number of oh God, citizens, but every item in our storerooms. I get so stressed casting. sometimes. I have to count llamas before I can fall asleep at night. <laughs> After the theft, mm. I'm trying to recount oh, all the God. goods in the storeroom. We have corn, potatoes, and cotton here. He does but sound how much like of him. each? I'm just it not sure. It probably is him. Also, R.I.P. He died it's recently. A kipu. Uh, a few years I have to ago. not hundreds of them to replace the ones that were stolen. One, two, Each of the three. nuts has a number value, uh, uh, as does uh. each color of string. By tying different nuts on different colored strings, I can record exact numbers. Like the number of llamas in the Empire, for example. All right. My fingers could use a break from counting. Easy. See those storerooms? Please count everything inside each one. Then mark down the number by putting corn kernels on the nearest counting frame. Well, I was trained to do this in school, but it's not too hard. It's all in the fingers, really. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm, I'm sorry. Sure. By putting corn kernels in the empty spaces on the counting frame, you'll record specific numbers. Here's a big handful for you. Okay. Pacha mama, I cannot give you any more of my time. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Oh, God damn it. The counting frame is a stone it's tablet divided into a grid. Friendly. By filling in some of the boxes, you can record numbers. Okay, wait here. I'll run a quick count. I counted 1,574 ears of corn piled in there. I know, I'm a really fast counter. It's a gift. I counted 1,574 ears of corn in there. What a memory. I counted 1,574 ears of corn in there. What a memory. 1,015. Okay, let's seven, use four. that counting frame. Use the counting frame to mark down the number of corn three, cobs three, seven, in the storeroom. Those are the corn kernels the head uh, accountant gave us. I see. So you say there are 4,751 ears of corn in the storeroom. Hmm. That doesn't agree with my count. Retry. Oops. I counted 1,574 ears of corn in there. What a memory. 1,500. Okay, let's use that counting frame. Use the counting frame to mark down the number of corn cobs in the storeroom. By your markings on the counting frame, you've indicated there are 1,574 ears of corn. That's correct. Will you do the same for the other storerooms? I have so much to do. All right. Hang on to your hat. I'll be right back. 3,029 potatoes. The spuds were really flying in there. Spud City. There are still 3,029 potatoes inside. Okay, let's use that counting frame. Please indicate the quantity of potatoes in the storeroom on that counting frame. There's a corn kernel there already. See it? Oh, shit. Five. So five plus. Oh, what? Jesus Christ, it froze for a second. According to what you've marked on the tablet, there are 3,029 potatoes. You have done me a great service. Don't stop now.
Our extra cotton plants are stored there. I'll be back in a flash. There are 628 piles of cotton in there. It's a shame the Incas don't know about t-shirts. 628. Okay, let's use that counting frame. Yeah, Please shame. record the number of cotton plants here, based on the storeroom inventory. Six. Oops. Five. Eight. By your markings on the counting frame, you've indicated there are 628 piles of cotton. Excellent work. You are rather handy with a counting frame. Yeah. Now please go tell Pachacuti that we are finished at last with the storeroom inventories. Hello again, my faithful friends. What news have you? Did the thing. Ah, my profound thanks for your clever counting skills. But there remains one more important task to complete. Can you help me with it? What the hell now? I need to transport some food to a distant village suffering from famine. Please gather about a hundred potatoes from my royal storerooms and load them on a llama. And let me know when the loading is complete so I won't worry. hundred potatoes, huh? What is it this time? My ulcer is already aggravated with bad news. Watch your step on the rope bridge. It's a long way down. Hey, those llamas must be good luck. We found a C note. Spud heaven. I grabbed exactly 115 purebred potatoes and stuffed them in this sack. We're good to go. Very good. But before you go, please adjust the counting frame to match the reduced number of potatoes in the royal storeroom. Oh hmm. Boy. We still have 3,029 marked here. We'll need to account for the 115 potatoes we've bagged. I see. So you say there are 2,929 potatoes in the storeroom. Nope. That doesn't match the reduced number of potatoes oh, in the storeroom. Shit. No, we have enough potatoes already. It's time for some llama loading. Ah, 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 forgetting something? Don't leave without those valuable potatoes. No, we have enough potatoes already. It's time for some llama loading. Oh. Uh, 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 don't leave yet. The counting frame must match the reduced potato inventory. Get to work. Hmm. We still have 3,029 marked here. We'll need to account for the 115 potatoes we've bagged. 3,029 minus... 115, huh? I'm an idiot, so let me get the calculator. No, that's the calendar! Okay, so 2914. You're getting a bit corny. <laughs> One of your rows is not a real number. Hmm. We still have 3,029 marked here. 
we'll need to account for the 115 potatoes we've bagged. So two, basically nine. No, no, this can't be. One of your rows is not a real number. Try fewer kernels. Hmm, we still have 3,029 marked here. We'll need to account for the 115 potatoes we've bagged. Okay, so 3,029. So that's five, eight, nine. I see. So you say there, there are 2,914 potatoes. Perfect work, detective. You've updated that counting frame to account for all the potatoes taken from the storeroom. That llama already has a pack on its back. Perfect fit. Let's head back to Pachacuti and let him know the llamas are loaded and ready. Hello again, my faithful friends. What news have you? No, no. Thanks to you, I now have the Empire running smoothly again. Thank but you God. might be able to help me interpret the strange symbols I found on this paper. Holy Mama Llama! It's the third Carmen note! I'm activating the cuffs. Watch out, villain! Here we come! So that took a little bit longer Smart move. than it should have. Silver was called Tears of the so Moon kind of by the Incas, idiot. so our thief must be hiding in that sack of silver. <laughs> Time for a high energy high five. We've nabbed Jane Reaction. That's funny because I'm taking Riva now. You're headed Not back to the back. Acme lockup, Jane. And with its patented new laser bar security, you won't be escaping again. You've caught up with me again, agents, but you'll never accelerate fast enough for a collision with Carmen. Congratulations! You re-jailed Jane Reaction, recaptured the accounting keepers, and fixed food distribution for the whole Inca Empire. Thanks to you, Pachacuti's kingdom will grow far and wide. Yeah, I did that. And speaking of empire builders, Carmen has already pulled another time heist. Can you take the case right now? Yeah. You're speeding toward the coast of Spain in 1493, where an Atlantic Ocean oh, traveler God. is lost at sea. The folks who financed his trip are mucho worried, so you'd better try to find out what's causing the delay. Charting unknown waters is rock solid specialty, so he'll come along as your good guy. Good luck, detective. I sure Gotta hope you don't get seasick. We've hit Spain in the year 1493. That must be Queen Isabella right over there. You know, Isabella earned a place in history by supporting the explorations of Christopher Columbus. But at the moment, the senior senora looks royally upset. Disaster! Columbus has not returned from his voyage to China. I can only guess that he has been lost at sea. My advisors warned me that his plan would sink. Hey, it sounds like one of Carmen's crooks has put a crimp in Columbus's plans. Let's talk with the queen and see what we can do. 
This porcelain cup was imported from China. The pesky Portuguese have been vying with Spain for the fastest sea route to China. Spain will find it first, and when we do, our cups will runneth over. Greetings. You are welcome in the royal court of Spain, although you've come at an unhappy time. I am Isabella, Queen of Spain and ruler of Castile and Aragon. My husband Ferdinand and I made this a great nation. Amen. By uniting many warring groups in the country, we created the powerful United Kingdom of Spain. Christopher Columbus sailed away eight months ago to find a westward route to China, but he has not returned. I fear his decision to sail west was not the best. If Columbus is safe and sound, he must be found. He sailed west, so you must too, to find him. You may take this ocean map for the westward journey. Most sailors reach China by sailing around Africa and heading east. Columbus insisted that since the world is round, he could reach China faster by sailing west instead. I'm searching for the fastest trade route to China. Marco Polo indeed. His route runs across land and takes far too long. A sea route to China will be faster, and ships can carry more goods than camels. The Portuguese already have an eastward sea route, so I hope to find a faster way to the west. Avoid the winds to the north. We call them the westerlies because they blow from the west and push sailing ships eastward back to Europe. Try heading south, where you may find more favorable winds. I guess people hate Columbus now. I'd say we're in the Spanish town of Santa Fe. This is where Columbus sought money from Isabella to pay for his voyage. The first world maps were drawn by an ancient Greek named Ptolemy. Although his maps were completely wrong, people believed in his work up until the 15th century. Say, this map seems related to the voyages of Diago Gomez, the Portuguese captain who coasted down the coast of Africa. Diago's voyage gave Portugal an exploration edge over Spain. For a while, anyway. Ask away, matey. Uh, thanks. Those drapes are made of silk brought all the way from China. China is the only place to get fine silk, and I just had to have it. Now, like, I don't the want first European to sail around the southern tip of Africa was Bartholomew Diaz. His discovery opened up the eastern sea lanes to China and forced Columbus to postpone his plans. Good luck crossing the vast ocean. May the wind and current be always at your back. Oh We're almost ready to cast off, but first let's learn to navigate. Use the mast to adjust the sail. When the sail is open, we'll blow with the wind, but when the sail is closed, we'll drift with the current instead. When you're ready, ring the ship's bell to start moving. And there was a disturbing lack of sea I guess at this point it doesn't matter. Smooth move. The compass says we're now pointing west. Let's observe the wind and the current. The wind is heading west, and the current is going east. Columbus is somewhere to the west, so the wind looks like our best bet. Try opening the sail to catch the wind, then ring the bell. Aye, aye, Captain. The sail is open, so westward blowing will now be going. Hold on to your hat. Good sailing, Captain. The helm is at your command. Remember, keep a close eye on the wind and current conditions and adjust the sail to keep us heading towards Columbus.
Nice exposure. That's a great view to the south. At your behest, we're now pointing west. At your behest, we're now pointing west. We're now aiming toward the wild, wild west. Nice exposure. That's a great view to the south. Okay. At your behest, we're now pointing west. I feel like such a dumbass. We're now pointing to the south. At your behest, we're now pointing west. Okay, west. I want to go south. We're now pointing to the south. We're now aiming toward the wild, wild west. Oh! Hey, Lord Rallius. We're now aiming toward the wild, wild west. Okay, west. I want to go south. There we go. Nice exposure. That's a great view to the south. There we go. There. That wasn't so bad. How's it going? It's going all right. All right, we've reached the West Indies. Let's hit the beach and look for Columbus. Say, I think we've made a discovery of our own. We've found Captain Christopher Columbus. Gentlemen, I assure you I have everything under control. After all, I'm Christopher Columbus. I'll find a way home. This scene feels sort of familiar, eh, fellow Norsemen? But a bunch of sailors arguing on a beach doesn't mean a thing. That is, uh... Looking for coconut palm trees? Don't bother. Coconut palms were actually imported by Europeans. Right now, the only palms around here are the ones on your hands. I must be in China. These plants smell like cinnamon and rhubarb. Plants that grow near China and Japan. These plants might smell like cinnamon and rhubarb, but they aren't. Misleading evidence like this helps convince Columbus that he'd reached China rather than a whole new continent. Please, don't rile up my anxious crew. You'd think they'd love being trapped in a paradise. But instead, they just want to get home to Spain. That sturdy sea chest has a bad case of lockjaw. Too bad we don't have a key. What Europeans called the New World was old news to these natives. 
who had a thriving culture here when Columbus arrived. This island lies near present-day Cuba. Columbus named it San Salvador, but the natives call it Guanahani. I'm uh, absolutely certain this is one of the islands at the outskirts of China or Japan. Where else could we be? Oh, my charts, my charts. I'm getting island fever without them. How I long to see again the noble plains of Spain. The ocean charts I created on my westward voyage were stolen, and now my men are making waves. They refuse to sail back across the sea without a good map for navigation. A grubby-looking thief wormed his way on board, posing as one of my crew and hooked by charts. Then he sailed off with one of my ships, the Pinta. My sailors are a suspicious lot. They won't set sail until they see the charts that prove I know the way home. Why, I am a Christopher Columbus. I'm the brave explorer who just discovered the fabulous in the west with the route to this place, China. Of course this is China. I sailed directly west from Spain to get here. And everyone knows that there's no other land between Spain and China. I'd prove it to you. Except someone stole my charts from that sea chest. Watch this. Whoever stole my charts left behind this strange scrap of paper. Hardly a fair trade. Say, that's a piece of the Carmen note. The thief must have dropped it in the chest when he stole Columbus's charts. We meet again. Forget Hmm, interesting theory. I could check your ID against my charts, uh, if they hadn't been stolen. Nice. All right, the map is safely inside. Phew, that's a load off my chest. We meet again. Forgive me if I seem upset, but my stolen charts are still missing. What's this? There's a chart in my chest. It's not the original, but it has all of the information to make an eastward sea journey. All right, men. I uh, <coughs> forgot to mention that a great explorer always carries a second map. That was a brilliant way to get Columbus to examine our chart. Now he can head back to Spain and we can join him. I suspect our thief plans to meet Carmen at a time portal in Europe. And we'll be there. It's good to be aboard ship again. Shall we take another look at our chart? Okay, so... Nice navigating. Now we're aiming east. The compass is needling north, and we're matching it. Our ship is now nosing due north. The compass is needling north, and we're matching it. Don't worry, we're stocked with plantains from the islands of the West Indies. I find them quite appealing. Ah, the wind, the water, the salty spray. There's nothing I like better than a sea voyage, except maybe fame and glory. The compass is needling north, and we're matching it. All right. Good grief. I believe we found the Sagasa Sea. Nice navigating. Now we're aiming east. Hopefully 
I know a shortcut. Our ship is now nosing due north. No! At your behest, we're now pointing west. We're now pointing to the south. The Sargasso Sea. Nice navigate. Our ship is not. All right, now the shortcut. We're in the westerlies. These winds coming from the west are blowing us straight east towards Europe. Nice navigating. Now we're aiming east. There we go. After that move, we're now easing eastward. Nice navigating. Now we're aiming east. After that move, we're now easing eastward. All right. Ah, we're back in Europe at last. Let's hurry back to Spain and hook that crook. Columbus, you've returned. We thought the sea had swallowed you up. The sea is a no match for Christopher Columbus. I made many great discoveries on my voyage, and I could not have returned without the aid of these helpful travelers. But now, your majesty, let's turn into that new title and those grand rewards we discussed. I have a better idea. Let's outfit some more ships and send you back. Mamma mia! Look! A scrap of the Carmen note. It's time to put this rhyme together. You know, the official name for a map maker is a cartographer. Columbus wasn't the first to suggest sailing west to reach Asia. An Italian named Paolo Toscanelli had proposed such a voyage before Columbus ever approached the court of Spain. Okay, so where's the other, where's the other note? The first world maps were drawn by an ancient Greek named Ptolemy. The first world, the first world, say, this map seems related to the voyages of Diago Gomez, the Portuguese captain who coasted down the coast of Africa. Diago's voyage gave Portugal an exploration edge over Spain, for a while anyway. I guess you're not seasick. Back to the ship we go. Uh... Great grab! That completes the Carmen note. Hang on, I'll fire up the time cuffs for some arresting action. All right, thanks, the ship is fully stocked, but we definitely get lost at sea without a good ocean chart. Maybe the Queen has one we can borrow. Eureka! That's a map of the New World. The only map which shows the American continents. It's the one from Carmen's note. Thank God. Huh. We've put the lid back on Dr. Beljar. And this time, our case is airtight. Ah, well, you've taken the wind out of this doctor's sail. But I doubt if you'll put Carmen in jail. Congratulations! You charted the way across the Atlantic, rescued Christopher Columbus, and put Dr. Beljar back in the can. 
Prince now Philip. regular travel between Europe and the Americas can start. The biggest population shift in the history of the planet will happen thanks to your sailing skills. Yeah, I did that. You're doing great work, and we need you to keep it up. Another crime has struck another time. Can you take the case? Uh, yeah, okay. You're heading for the height of Europe's renaissance. Florence, Italy in 1505. Okay, but where there should be a masterpiece, there's just a lot of moping. See if you can cheer things up. Oh, boy. I wouldn't think of sending you to the Renaissance without Renaissance. Great painter and good guide. Good luck, and remember to keep your detective work in perspective. Hey there, hipster. Where are we now, you ask? You me? Let's see. Italy, 1505. Yes, it's a Renaissance, all right. That fellow over there is Leonardo da Vinci, my artistic idol. Hmm, I wonder why he stopped painting. Mona, how about the smile, eh? A little one. What good's my picture going to be without a smile? The smile's supposed to be the best part. What is a smiling? What is a laughter? What is a happiness when a thief can march right in here and take advantage of the trust of a genius? I am not amused. Not amused at all. Hello. I hope you haven't come to steal anything, because someone has beat you to it. I can't get my model to smile. Without that lovely smile, there's no painting. I'm afraid I'm no good at telling jokes. I can paint, sculpt, design, and invent. But jokes have always eluded me. I'm a very serious man, you see. That's a shame. I usually hire some amusing jesters, and the smiles last all day. But this morning, a strange night fellow came in and offered to build me a jesting machine using my own spare parts. <laughs> I love a clever machine, so I accepted. It worked at first, but then there was a commotion, and the jesting just quit. The knight had vanished with my notebooks and damaged his machine during the escape. Now the jesting machine is useless, and Mona isn't smiling. That would be most kind of you, as I'm very busy painting. The sketches on the back wall should help, and there are plenty of spare parts in the other room. Those schematics are all that remain of my stolen notebooks. The thief used them to build his jesting machine. I am a painter and a sculptor, but I'm also an inventor. I have a deep interest in mechanics. I have a theory that the mechanical flight is actually possible. Do you think that's strange? Well, I don't like it to brag, but uh, a flying machine, an armored vehicle, rapid fire crossbows, paddle boats, bicycles, and the list goes on. <laughs> of course, these were never actually built, but they do oh. look splendid on paper. Hack. I believe that painting is actually a science, and I intend to prove it in my upcoming treatise. A scientific use of painting can help describe the complex and wonderful properties by which we see the world. Painters, like scientists, possess a knack for observation and the ability to translate these observations onto canvas. Painters are indeed intelligent people. Cranky, but intelligent. I generally get commissions. A commission is a project that someone asks for and pays me to do. I've done commissions for the de' Medici family and even a few popes. Interesting. I am not amused. Well, how about a joke? How many vile villains does it take to screw in a light bulb? What's a light bulb? Uh, never mind. I am not amused. Well, how about a joke? What a uh I suspect Leonardo would write anywhere. Even that tile contains some strange words. That C note means we're right on track. Just like me for real. Smallest 
gear wheel, largest spring, and a medium cam. Ciao! Check this room. It's laid out in perspective. Perspective is an art trick, allowing the representation of three-dimensional space. Wait a second. Smallest gear wheel, largest spring, medium cam. Yeah, it wants us to judge perspective in a 2D game. This one looks good. Try using the spare part on a section of the jesting machine. If it fits, that jester will soon be jumping for joy. Bingo! That's the right spring. Things will really be bouncing now. <laughs> Ciao! This one looks good. Try using the spare part on a section of the jesting machine. If it fits, that jester... Now that's what I call setting the wheels in motion. Let's watch it get rolling. <laughs> We're jamming now. A Carmen note was gumming up that gear. All right. Now medium cam. How about this one? Try using the spare part on a section of the jesting machine. If it fits, that just... Talk would. about dinky. We'll need to go find a larger... All right. Okay, a larger one. How about this? Right now. All right. This might... Uh. All right. How about this? Yeah, Perfect fit. This piston rod is ready to start rocking. Echo, the machine is working again. And with Mona modeling, yeah. I might get some work of my own done. <laughs> One last bitch. <laughs> Perfecto, that's just the smile I want to see. Mysterious, enigmatic, marvelous. My painting is finally finished, and it's a masterpiece, <laughs> if I do say so myself. Mona, come with me. We're going to paint the town red. Oh, no. <clears throat> Whoa, that machine must have been the work of a vile villain, since no one in this age made a machine that could really fly. That makes Carmen note number three. Now for the hard part, Figuring out our cunning little word games. Now that the C note's complete, we can activate the time cups. I suspect Leonardo would write anywhere. Even that tile contains some strange words. Yeah, but why? That's the one. The Chronopedia mentioned that Leonardo always used mirror writing, meaning he liked to write backwards. So if we spin the tool on the tile, we end up with the loot. Yeah. Right on. This is one night whose quest is over. We nabbed old Sir Vile for the second time. Back to Acme Jail for you, Sir Vile. Perhaps we'll put that plate armor of yours to good use this time as license plates. Fie, I am recaptured. But do not gloat, ye Acme rogues. Lady Carmen still roams free. Well done, detective. You subdued Sir Vile again, got the machinery in order, and helped Leonardo get a chuckle out of Mona Lisa. Thanks to you, Art and science of the Renaissance will keep coming together in wild new ways. Excellent work, as usual. All right, that's good. Yes, you are quite a worthy opponent. But in the end, I'll outsmart you. I've got much grander plans underway. Sounds like another time crime is already in the works. Can you move on to another case right now? All right. 
Your next stop in time is the 16th century in the heart of Central America. The this century's one? most important Aztec ceremony should be starting yep, right one. about now. But instead of the worshiping, there's just a lot of worry. Better see what's shaking. Here comes your good guide for this trip, Antiquity. No one knows ancient empires like Anne, so you're in good hands. Good luck this and one's good really searching. Short if I remember. This is where it becomes obvious that they were under a time piece. Ah, point. time traveling has got to be my favorite pastime. Okay, Crime Stopper. The year is 1519, and we're in Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire in Central America. Looks like Montezuma, ruler of the empire, is right over there. Oh, please excuse my casual appearance. My formal feather headdress is gone. Hmm, looks like Carmen's time crook has been at work. Let's find out more. Right. Greetings, my friends. If that headdress doesn't turn up soon, heads are going to roll. Oh, no. I am Montezuma, ruler of the mighty Aztecs. All the land around bows under my dominion. I'm preparing for an important event, the Aztec Fire Ceremony. Once every 52 years, our solar calendar and our ceremonial calendar line up. Tonight is that night. If I don't perform the proper rituals while wearing my special headdress, the sun will burn out. You are in the island city of Tenochtitlan. From here, I rule the Aztec Empire and all its riches. You should visit our great outdoor market. There, you'll find whatever your heart desires. We Aztecs make no sacrifices, at least not in the marketplace. You can buy cocoa beans, fur, feathers, gold. It's one-stop shopping. Uh. A thief heisted my royal headdress and headed out of here. If I don't get it back, I can perform the rituals tonight properly, and the world will come to an end! Oh no. I could make another headdress, but the feather worker who makes my feather clothes has flown the coop. It's always hard to find good help. Yes! Go to the feather worker's place, see what materials are there, then find whatever else you need to make some headway on my headwear. Those pots contain cocoa beans, which we Aztecs use to make our favorite drink, hot chocolate. We love cocoa beans so much that we use them like money. Nothing special. You are welcome to take them. That cocoa bean pot came compliments of Montezuma. That book is called a codex. It's a collection of symbols written on deer skin or tree bark. The Aztecs borrowed this writing style from a neighboring culture as they had no writing system of their own. That big stone is covered in symbols representing myths and rituals of Aztec life. It's called the Calendar Stone. Imagine hanging that on the refrigerator. Yeah. What the hell? What's this, a humongous entertainment? Ah, oh. uh, my prize pet snakes. We Aztecs fear snakes a little, but we also worship them. A winged serpent is the symbol of my people. That's part of Carmen's note. Our thief obviously slithered through recently. Goodbye. The wing feathers of an owl are so soft that the bird makes no noise while flying. Eerie. All right, back to the palace. Farewell. What a mess! Some scatterbrain left things scattered all over the place. The Aztecs had plenty of gold nuggets like this one. Unfortunately, a surplus of gold can bring unwanted attention. The gold-hungry Spanish, under Cortez, will arrive in Aztec lands in just a few more months. Nah, that gold deserves to be framed. Okay. How much for getting rich quick?
bad fit. Uh. We're off to the marketplace. Quetzal feathers were powerful symbols of Aztec culture. Their most important god, Quetzalcoatl, appeared as a serpent with wings of Quetzal feathers. The Aztecs ate a wide variety of foods, but their main course was always maize. Excellent! What would you like to trade for? Those feathers make a fine choice. Feathers. Those terraced steps give that temple a classic Aztec look. Bye, come back soon. Back to the palace. Farewell. We're off to the marketplace. Excellent. What would you like to trade for? Maze. Good selection. That maize is very fresh and tasty. Bye. Come back soon. Back to the palace. And here's kind of the annoying one. You are welcome to borrow that bird whistle, but you'll have to put it back if you want to borrow another. Goodbye. Talk about whistling while you work. I don't think Polly wants a cracker today. Okay, we fed some feed into the feeder. All right, back to the palace. Goodbye. Why, hello to you too. All right, back to the palace. Okay, it's going to be the more annoying part. Goodbye. There we go. Good thinking. The blue Katinga had to drop that feather before it could munch up any maize. That's the rare tail feather of a blue Katinga. Let's not get flighty with it. All right, back to the palace. Farewell. That wooden frame looks perfect for assembling Montezuma's headdress. Back to the palace. Greetings again. I... Farewell. That wooden... We're off to the marketplace. A car... Bye. That wooden... That wooden... Back to the... Greeting. Okay. Farewell. Uh, we finished it, didn't we? Oh. Hmm, that gold nugget seems out of place there. Hmm, that gold nugget seems out of place. That go well placed, detective. 
That feather headdress looks perfect. It's just what Montezuma needs to start the Aztec fire ceremony. Good work. You've got the final piece of the Carmen note. I'll activate the time cuffs so we can put that pickpocket in the pen. Back to the palace. You have my eternal thanks. With this royal headdress waving on my head, I'll have the world fluttering at my feet. Time to start the ceremony. Yeah. That crook must be hiding in a different nook. The criminal must be dug in somewhere else. Of course, the eagle is the Aztec symbol for the sun, so it's time to go supernova on a thief. All right. We've squashed Bug Zapper flat for the second time. All right, Bugs, it's back to Acme headquarters for you. They'll need to break out the bug repellent. All right, you's got the zap on me. But you'll never catch the buzz about Carmen's real plan. Yes! Bugs Zapper is behind bars again. Montezuma is under a new headdress, and the Aztecs have another day in the sun, all because of you, Detective. Congratulations! You've enabled the Aztec culture I, to I fully spread its wings and have a permanent influence on Mexican history and culture. Good going. But Reba. it looks like there's fresh villainy ahead. Can you take another case right now? Uh, no, I don't think so. When you're ready to continue, we'll pick up our search right here. All right, that was fun. Uh, that was fun. Uh, goodbye.